A very good morning to all the delegates and faculty present at Eurocon 2022. I thank Nepal Urological Association for this wonderful opportunity. In particular, I would like to thank Professor Uttam Sharma sir, Professor Parasmani sir, Dr. Anil Shrestha sir, and Dr. Bhojiraj for this opportunity. Today, I would be speaking on ergonomics in laparoscopic surgery. I have nothing to disclose. The reasons for slow growth of laparoscopic surgery is two-dimensional vision, loss of tactile sensation. People believe that fewer urological procedures could be done laparoscopically and there is a high level of difficulty, but this is found untrue. I would say why do laparoscopy? Because it provides magnificent visualization. A video imaging system allows the assistant, anesthesiologist, nurses to be equally involved in the procedure that is being done. When you consider ergonomics of the operating room, the components, that is the imaging system, the insufflator, the hemostatic generator, when they are placed in a particular order, it leads to an best ergonomic outcome. Like if you see this particular trolley, the vision card has the monitor up front. Below the monitor should be the camera and the light source. Immediately below it should be the insufflator and suction aspirator. Then comes the turn of electrosurgical unit. All these units should be visible to the operating surgeon right in front of it. Consider the general principles of the operating room setup. The operative field and the monitor should be in the same line. The insufflator should be below the monitor and the light source should be on the same card. So this is what should not happen in your operating room. Here I am trying to insufflate as I look behind for the readings on insufflator. You should have custom main drapes and they have multiple holes where instruments can be parked. An important consideration while we are talking about ergonomics is that all the laparoscopic instruments have only four degree of freedom movement. That means the laparoscopic instrument can move either craniocaudal or mediolateral and can have rotatory or in and out movements. So these are the four movements out of which all the laparoscopic movements need to be created. Basically two movements out of this, that is going in and out and rotational movements are intuitive and the other two movements are counterintuitive. When there is a counterintuitive movement, the laparoscopic instrument moves on a fulcrum. That means it behaves like a lever. But let us understand what is ergonomics. Ergonomics basically is made of ergon means work and nomos means law of nature. So it is fitting a man to the best environment at work. Ergonomics can be sensorial or physical. Sensorial ergonomics improve precision dexterity, whereas physical ergonomics give comfort to the surgeon. In laparoscopy, there are factors which are unrelated to the human skill. There is decoupling of visual motor axis. There is loss of haptic sensation. There is change of visual orientation. But when you look at ergonomic consideration of instruments, the most important thing is what is the level of the instrument? The level of the instrument should always be at the level of your elbow. There are a few angles that need to be considered. First is the manipulation angle. Manipulation angle is the angle that the two working instruments form with each other. Ideally, this manipulation angle should be 60 degree. At this angle, both the deltoids are at rest. Once the manipulation angle goes to more than 75 degrees, there is an abduction of shoulders and a lot of pain. Another angle that one must consider is the azimuth angle. It is the angle that the laparoscope forms with the working instrument. The azimuth angle should be about 30 degrees to 45 degrees. Once the angle is less than 15 degrees, there will be rolling over of the instrument over the lens. And whenever the azimuth angle is more than 45 degrees, there will be severe abduction of shoulder. Another angle to be considered is the elevation angle. The elevation angle is the angle that the scope forms or an instrument forms with the body of the patient. Ideally, this angle has to be about 60 degrees. Whenever this angle is more than 75 degrees, there is a lot of abduction and pain at the shoulder. A concept that all of us must remember is that all laparoscopic instruments behave like lever. So they move around a fulcrum. It has a load arm and an effector arm. The fulcrum here is the anterior abdominal wall. Ideally, all laparoscopic instruments 
should behave like type 1 lever. That means half of the instrument should be inside, half of the instrument should be outside. One centimeter of movement outside should cause one centimeter of movement inside. But if a situation happens where three fourth of the instrument is inside and only one fourth of the instrument is outside, say while doing a left sided nephrectomy, you are using a right handed instrument and dissecting the upper fourth. Here, for every unit movement outside, the movement inside is exponentially increased. That is what we call as wobbling of the instrument. And when you are trying to dissect the upper pole, your sharp instrument may get into the spleen or diaphragm. So the movement here is high per unit force. That means the movement is magnified and the force is rectified. There can be a situation where the target organ is too close. That means three-fourths of the instrument is outside and one-fourth of the instrument is inside. This would lead to an increase in elevation angle. Also, if you are using a metallic port, then energized instrument tip will be very close to the tip of the metallic port, leading to the charge getting transmitted to metallic port and eventually leading to what is known as capacitative coupling. So ideally, all instruments should behave like type 1 lever. Another important issue that happens in laparoscopy is optical illusion. That means you are not able to perceive the depth. Like in this particular picture, you don't know whether this is a young lady or an old lady. So how do we know that we are measuring or understanding the depth perfectly? It is by the depth cues. So just look at this particular video. This particular needle is placed in front of the chicken breast. It is casting a shadow on the chicken breast. That means it is occluding a small portion of the chicken breast. As the camera moves in, the edges of the needle become sharper. Its relative size increases. Movements are more pronounced. And the texture gradient of the chicken breast improves. That means anything that is deeper is darker. Anything that is nearer is brighter. Anything that moves more is closer. Anything move that moves less is farther. Anything that has well-defined sharp border is closer and anything that is fuzzy is deeper. I would say that all instruments should behave like type 1 lever. The laparoscope should be between the working instruments. A manipulation angle ideally should be 60 degrees. Elevation angle should also be around 60 degrees, never more than 75 degrees. The azimuth angle should be equal on both the sides. This will lead to maximum depth perception. So if you were to use all what we understood in ergonomics in a port positioning concept, then we need to understand a baseball diamond concept. The baseball diamond concept says that you make a diamond out of your hand by using the index finger and the tip of the thumb. Place the conglomeration of index fingers at the target organ and the tip of the thumb at the level of camera and both your anatomical snuff box will give you the port positioning. But how do you get this? You get this by the triangle law. Now triangle law states that for all the three angles to be equal to 60 degrees, you need to make an equilateral triangle. So 18 centimeters of an adult instrument needs to be inside because 36 centimeters is the size of an adult instrument. Now, 18 centimeters of the instrument is inside on both the sides. That means the base should also be 18 centimeters. You want the camera exactly in the middle. Therefore, you have 9 centimeters on each side and all the angles should be 60 degrees. This can all be achieved by using the baseball diamond concept. So you'll have 9 centimeters on each side. Your target organ will be 18 centimeters from both the working ports and this will enable the most ergonomic positioning of the ports. Another ergonomic consideration is gesture imprecision. Your instrument size and your port size should match so that the instrument moves the least. That means in a 10 mm car, do not put a 5 mm instrument. It will wobble and make your life very, very difficult. So ideally, a surgeon should stand straight with the head in the axis of the trunk without rotation of the cervical spine, should be in a neutral position, arms should be by the side of the body, bent to 70 to 90 degrees, forearms should be horizontal, hands pronated, and the grip on the instrument should be light. The operating room table should be about 
five into the height of the surgeon. That means it should approximately be at the waist height of the surgeon. Surgeon should be able to look 15 degrees downward. This will cause minimum fatigue at the turn of single master at level. The distance of the monitor should be five times the diagonal of the monitor. At this particular distance, the image formation will occur at macula and it will give maximum acuity and color perception. With that, I come to a conclusion of all the ergonomic considerations. My key message to all the viewers is the more you sweat, in setting up ergonomics, the lesser will your patient bleed on the operating table. Thank you very much for a patient listening.